Join the charge. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Heck, we're even on TikTok. We're excited to engage with you. We hope you'll join us moving forward. Click that like and subscribe button and go sign up on superchargestocks.com and let's keep you notified. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Supercharged Stocks. I'm here with Robert Rolfing, CEO of, of Desert Mountain Energy. Some uh, news releases come out, uh, some developments. I think we just have, want to touch base and see how things are going, uh, some of the milestones that we're looking forward to moving forward, and just overall impressions uh, now coming into uh, coming into the, the fall and winter months. Well, good morning. Thank you for having me on again, Andrew. It's always a pleasure. It's always a pleasure. Uh, we see you have a news release out just the other day uh, in regards to you know this commercial helium and hydrogen well at uh, number four there, or sorry, number well number two. Um, and some good, and there's something significant about that as well. It's it's great grades, but also uh, a lot less noble gases. So there's lots of good news in regards to that. Maybe you can walk us through what that kind of means, and also the hydrogen content, what that could possibly mean. Well, I, as I say, having a, once again, uh, within the same formation, fairly close to within, uh, it's technically within the same formation where we had previously perforated in the well and had a four, uh, little over 4% uh, helium. Uh, this zone was real close to it. There's an impermeable layer in between. And then this is another little thick section underneath it. Um, we thought the, the pressure should be pr fairly close to each other. They weren't exactly. Uh, so we squeezed off the upper purse and just will produce from the lower part. Because in the lower part of it, it has none of the noble gases. It has hydrogen, which was the we had originally seen uh, on a on a mass spectrometer, which is not an exact science. I mean, it is very high tech, but when you have readings that are just basically when you're drilling and you're just sampling what's coming out of the well, and, and that's a mixture of everything. When you're drilling with air uh, and a load of water, it, it can throw off some real odd things. So you, you can't extrapolate exactly what's going on. You can see good, you know, good and bad. If you don't see anything, you know, well, yeah. that's nothing. Yeah. So we had originally seen a little bit. Uh, it didn't look like it was this, this type of composition, though. And that's probably because there's a mixture of the up hole and this section that was open. Uh, so when we really came back, I went, no, I want to go back into that when we perfed it and uh, got the fluid off of it and it's like took a sample and it's like well it won't burn we knew that right away uh, because there's too much nitrogen but it's like eh, it just has a different odor to it i don't yeah. know how to say it uh, yeah. uh, so when we sent the first lab samples in uh, there was a lot of o2 in it just from in general air and you know, later on at the other samples that came down and uh, the CO2 had dropped. And that was one of the things that, you know, to have such a low CO2, no, no hexane pentanes, you know, it's like everything else dropped out, including noble gases. And the hydrogen was, was a 3.8%. It's the lightest you know, as well, just so background for some people mm -hmm. that are more generalists. It's the lightest gas. Uh, it can be a little bit challenging for storage, though. Uh, it's also a good price. It's a volatile price, but I think we were talking just earlier. It's I think today it might be somewhere around $16 a kilogram. Uh, so there's a good pricing on hydrogen. And I mean, we're kind of early to, to say where this could go, but um, I know some of the questions out there, maybe we can answer, maybe we can't, is that, is it the hope that uh, maybe this is something we'd see on one as well as four? Initially, we are going to strip it off with and use it to help power the as a backup power for the initial uh, operations on the uh, first processing facility on the Macaulay field. Uh, the one thing about it, between a combination of hydrogen and solar, 
nobody else is that green. Yep. Nobody. And so I am looking forward to uh, getting into that. The other aspect that one well, normally, wherever you have hydrogen elsewhere and, and other other states and other countries, uh, you normally have uh, another element called sulfur. And it comes out, then you have H2S gas. Uh, highly corrosive. Yes, you can strip the sulfur if it's high enough or you have to strip it. You still have to deal with it, treat it. And all of the equipment it touches, since it's highly corrosive, you're using nickel steel and other high, very high dollar components. And they all have to be changed out on a very regular basis on a maintenance program. So you're getting away from that. Uh, it just, it's again, it's almost like if you have a whole lot, you're trying to strip natural gas out or strip helium out of a natural gas stream yeah. that's like 40 or 50% or higher. It just adds complexity. You're using amine units, you're using back, you know, in addition, uh, everything has to be coming out at a different point. Uh, well, let me jump into this because you were talking about uh, the refining plant and progress there. And I know you've spoken with Alice the other day. It's a great interview for those who haven't seen it. Go check out that one as well. And I don't want to just have you <laughs> reiterate the same things over and over, but uh, you talked a little bit about uh, the the kind of milestones, the plans moving forward. We're looking for about Q2 uh, for timeframes as far as production for the plant and everything else. Is that safe to say? The plan is to, in you know Q2, to have this up and running. And then when we bring it online, it's not like you just, as I say, uh, flip a switch and instantly you're making millions of dollars. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, folks, it's not the way it works. Uh, you, you ramp, you start out the plant at the minimum levels and you verify that it's set running correctly. You test the gases, uh, everything at every point you're testing, and then you shut it down. You verify those tests, uh, again, because you cannot ship a gas on an aircraft. So everything has to be trucked. Then the, there are no facilities to do this specific type of testing in Arizona. So everything has to be ground transport to a, one of four or five testing labs. And most of the time, they are really good. The folks that we've been dealing with uh, have given us excellent service. I mean, like the day they get it delivered to them, if, it's, if they get that delivery of those tubes in the morning, I usually have an email within six hours the same day as far as trying to give people kind of milestones where we're going to be drilling you know we will be drilling more wells uh at, you know and we may do three back to back to back okay that is in general the plan if it works out now that we have you know we drilled the first wildcat we have a better idea exactly what's going on down hole. Now, when we go off and we drill, uh, we will drill probably two more wildcats next year, and along with a total of uh, either four or six development wells. Okay. You know, we'll get out there. Again, yeah. we'll be back into drilling wildcats. Uh, I love it, but I know somewhere, I know somewhere things are not going to be uh, absolutely wonderful. That's one thing I promised everybody. Yes, I yep. can't. I I will drill. Oh, I will drill a dry hole here and there. Yeah, guarantee it. Yep. That is one thing I can't absolutely guarantee. But I think with our success rate thus far, we've really done wonderful with this, and in such a short time. And also, I like that because we've talked about it. Is it's a distinction between are you buying a business, a company? long-term company that in the future is going to do the following things. So you want to invest in a company or, uh, which is a lot of times, are you interested in trying to trade on news? And mm -hmm. that trade on news can be attractive when you're a hot stock and you've, you've gone up like you guys have uh, because you know people get excited. They think, oh my God, this, this train's moving. But it also attracts a lot of people that want that either volatile, volatility move up and move down. 
And, uh, you know, sometimes you can't appease everyone. And I think nope. honing in on those that just say, listen, we're long term, we're in this thing as an investment in a company, which means the long term development of the projects, as well as the long term belief in the management, uh, these short term signals and noise or events, they, they, they mean something, but in the long run, it's data, it, we're moving towards a bigger goal. And that's certainly how we look at things over here. And I don't know if we can speak to this, but I know there's been the talk of attempting to get onto NASDAQ maybe next year at some point, which means a $5 plus stock price, you'd be attracting bigger institutional people at that point. And if nothing else, even if it wasn't necessarily a big you know, revenue stream, having the hydrogen, I feel, I mean, you can tell me if I'm wrong, wouldn't be, a, it's not certainly a bad angle to have on top of the rest of the package that you have for attracting the right people for a NASDAQ listing for a bigger story to get that traction. Going on NASDAQ, that train has already left the station. We currently, we have everything that we need to be there all, you know, we're already there yeah. as far as a requirement. We don't have to be a $5 stock. We have no. everything else in place. So that's yes. fine. Uh, I know a lot of people use that as a monitor or as a bench Problem. point. Uh, it, that's only one of the requirements. And we met all the other, and we have continued to meet all the requirements. A lot of it has more to do with reporting. And the way we had chosen when Don and I took over, we attenuated how we things were being done with the goal in mind of being on NASDAQ because you have to have things done in advance for a number of quarters before you do that. And so we, we've already met all those because we, Don and I made a, uh, working with Scott Davis, our CFO, we made those changes immediately. Good. And it, it wasn't huge. Yes, it costs more. There's more filings. There's more things you have to do. But we did it. And it was like, yeah, great. Now it's when it's, it will pay pay off. Everything. Yes. And again, you know, a lot. It goes back to Andrew. I'm building a company. Don and I and, the, and everybody I brought on. You know, you look at the team build out that I've done. Yeah, there's some people I would have liked to have sooner. Would have been easier on me personally. But it's working out long term. I'm I'm long term. So we know moving forward that we're going to have um, we have a, a lot of news flow. There's lots of work going on, and people always you know kind of ask, well, what's going to happen next? Where's what's this? What's that? We know that there's going to be lots of uh, drilling going on and wild canning, but we're we're not really putting a time frame necessarily on it because we're trying to avoid uh, people gaming the stock a little bit. Is that kind of fair to say? Yeah, that would be fair to say. And also it goes back to, we don't have drilling companies close here in Arizona that I want to use. I, I'm, I'm not going to take a chance on it. Yeah. You know, because of the way we want to drill and the team that I've put together, James and Eric, you know, we're going to change up uh, additional things is how we're working going forward drilling uh, little nuances but they have been working with the uh, drilling contractor and the completion contractor uh, everything how we're doing you know they are willing to work with us to do things a little bit differently again yeah. it gets back to my overall original I want to be as green as I can and there's a lot of people who say, well, you're an oil man. <laughs> yeah. There's, you can't, you don't have to disconnect both of them. You can do things in the most cost effective manner and with the profit margin that will be there on helium, it allows us to do other things. And now it does cost more up front. I, yes. It absolutely does. I agree. It probably costs uh, because of the way we're drilling wells, trying to stay uh, cleaner and greener on it. Have I added 23% to 25% of the cost to drill a well? You bet. Absolutely. But it's a one-time charge up front. And yes. for our goal as a company to be as responsible 
with the ESP and all of that. Yes, it's yeah. important. You know, like our VP of land and other and Jessica, she did. Uh, she just did a uh, presentation at the American uh, Association of you know, Petroleum Geologists, and and it was on th- that specific subject. And so, and on a very broad range, and what our company has already done. I've spoken about uh, Jamie Digby, who who does ESG specifically. He presented at the G7, and he's worked with companies like BlackRock. And he says, listen, Andrew, in regards to mining, it would go the same for helium. Is They're well aware of the desperate need for these critical resources. But they have very firm commitments on they're only going to work with companies that are doing things in a green manner. And that might piss a lot of people off. Like, and as I know, it does because yeah. people call me and say, this, it, it can't happen or this or that. And maybe they're right. But I just try to remove that, what, what's is it to just what they're saying. And I think if you approach things, it costs a bit more. But down the road, when you have like trillion, trillion dollar funds saying, this is what we want to see. That's, I think, the, the barometer to, to gauge after and chase after rather than maybe hope that you can squeak in some other way. Well, and that's one thing. It, again, it's an upfront cost that is there. But by having solar and now hydrogen, we're locking in operating costs at today's pricing. We're, we're locking it in not for just a few months. It's not a short-term 18, 24 uh, month contract for, uh, for electricity. We're not having to buy electricity out of the grid at who knows what <laughs> price it will be. Yes. You know, all those costs are getting locked in up front. And there's very few companies out there that can say, we have now locked in our electrical cost and our, our, our base you know, charge for 15 and 20 years. Who else can say that? Yeah. That's a huge I don't advantage. know. Yeah. They're few and far between. And that's what we're doing. And that's when it takes, a, again, it gets back to, we're not looking right here and now in front. We're looking out ahead. Yeah. I mean, that's, and that's what we like about this. And listen, I don't want to keep you chatting. We both know we can talk <laughs> each yeah, other's ears <laughs> off of, and you're an operations guy. There's a million things that are going on right now. And I don't want to steal your time. But I do appreciate you every time you do spend time with us to, to get us informed, just keep in touch and let us know what's happening. Um, much, uh, much appreciated. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you real soon. And we look forward to seeing any news that comes flowing out. But I know that there's a lot of things going on. And any, and those that watch and subscribe, rest assured, uh, there's so much happening behind the scenes. And uh, we look forward to seeing what's happening rolling into Christmas and then, of course, into 2022. Thank you very much. You have a great week, Andrew. All the best.